What has you all upset once again? Always, always complaining. Well, I just got rid of them reading my essays, and I've about had it. Come on, they're just kids. Let them write. Oh, they can write. It's just, I have to read them. I mean, we work on leads. How many times do I have to see a question as a lead? Questions? To start a paper? They can be very thought-provoking. Yeah, not the ones I have to read. If I have to see a topic sentence start like this one more time, have you ever heard of volcanoes? Or do you think gun control is bad? I mean, come on! A little creativity. Well, did you give them any examples to look at? Everybody should know you just don't state the question. And don't get me started on definitions. Defining key terms is important for students. Yeah, defining terms. But what I see is, according to Webster's Dictionary, gun control is... According to Wikipedia, a volcano is, I mean, a little bit of flair. Well, if I could just get my students to write a decent lead that just didn't say, have you ever heard about? We need to figure out what you should do to teach them. Remember, a good lead introduces the problem, but it also hooks the reader using your word choices. Let's look at this article about gentrification in San Francisco. If you know anything about the tech-driven culture boards that have flared in the Bay Area this past year, you know about the buses, carrying workers at tech companies from the North Bay homes to South Bay offices from one part of San Francisco to another. What do you think about that? I really like the word flare in that one. Yes, here the author really just introduced the problem that there is a culture war going on in San Francisco. Nothing fancy, just get to the point. So maybe I should encourage my students to not even worry about their lead. Make sure first that they just state the problem. They could even possibly skip a sentence or two and go back and write a lead. Yes, explaining your problem, what you're writing about to your audience, is way more critical than trying to write a lot of fluff, some cute sentence to start you off. We'll try it. Okay, so if they just introduce the problem, they'll be off to a good start. But what about all these kids that just keep starting their papers with questions? Did you know cats and dogs are differences? Ugh. Well, questions aren't necessarily a bad thing. Let's look at this example. Here's a snarky little article about someone who can't make a burrito. A burrito? As an example of good writing? Well, let's look at the question. Have you ever been to Earth? Well, obviously he's been to Earth. That's a silly question. No, it's a rhetorical question. Rhetorical questions are a type of device writers can use to start their papers. Oh, so a question that has an obvious answer? One that doesn't really need to be answered? Yes, you can use rhetorical questions as a way to establish common ground, to bring a writer, a reader, into what the writer is saying. That's it? Just write a question? No, it's never just it. You should follow it up. Have some kind of examples that will bring, that will satisfy the curiosity. Some, something that draws the reader in to the question. Okay, I'll have my kids give it a try. So, what's your favorite kind of lead? What gets you most excited to read? Really? I think it just comes down to the vignette. Students should try vignettes. A vignette? Yeah, a short story. I want them to write a lead, a hook. One to two sentences, not a story. 
A vignette is that. We're talking one to three sentences, a paragraph at most, where you introduce the problem, but you do it through the eyes of characters in a story. Let's take a look. Here's an example from Dana Boyd's book on It's Complicated. Notice what she does. Fred and Aaron, white 15-year-old friends living in suburban Texas, are avid gamers. When we first met in 2007, their mother was present. I asked about their participation. Oh, so Dana Boyd introduces the topic of social networking, but through the story of Fred and Aaron. Yes, that's what a good vignette does. Let's take another example. In this example, I absolutely love. It's from a tech journalist. I know how a gazelle feels. There you are, working hard on the savannah, and then BAM! The predators descend, chasing you across the plain, licking their lips, watching your every move, ready to pounce at the first sign of vulnerability and squeeze every morsel out you can. I spent nearly two years as a writer. Oh, so he's comparing tech journalism to being hunted on the savannah. Yes, the metaphor's a great story. Wow. You sure did help me out today. I realized maybe I should just throw up my arms whenever my kids write a lead. Yes, often they just don't have the strategies to get started. I'm going to have them focus on restating the problem first and returning to the lead if they have time. I like that idea. What else did you learn? Well, I learned a couple new strategies. I can use rhetorical questions and I can use vignettes to start my writing. Yes. But what is the overall goal of a lead? You need to draw in your audience while restating the problem. I like it.